right, good morning, Sunset family. We're glad that you're here. I want to invite you to come on in, find a place to, to sit, and let's begin to worship the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. And he's not finished yet. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So long be the world. What a blessing to think about, to sing about, to pray about the great glory of our God and all the great things that He has done in our lives. This morning, this time, is the opportunity for us to really let that sink in, to focus on it, to appreciate it, and to celebrate it together. We're thankful that you are here this morning with us to celebrate this time in which we give God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all the glory for all that they have done. If you are a guest with us, we appreciate you being here. And we ask that if you'll do us this huge favor, take one of the guest cards on the back of the pew in front of you, fill that out, give us some contact information, drop that in the collection box as you uh, go out this morning, and that'll be our way to connect to you. And that's certainly what we're trying to do is connect to those who are looking for a place to worship, looking for a church family, and a place to serve. So do us that big favor this morning, and that will be a huge blessing for us. Speaking of connecting, just want to um, introduce you to a family. I'm not sure if they're here this morning. The Branch family are wanting to come and place membership or become part of the family here. Sam and Jamila Branch, are you guys with us this morning anywhere? Somebody put right over here, right over here, and their kids, Josiah and Jedediah, welcome. It's good to have you with us. You may remember Sam back when he was really yay small, back in the day when the uh, all the Branch family were here, and uh, those were good times, and we remember you guys fondly and glad to have you here worshiping with us again. Like I said, it is a Connect 2 morning. It's a special morning for us because we are uh, 
uh, focusing on this mission that we have as a church and our mission to connect people to the kindness and the strength and the purpose of Christ. And we're doing a special effort this morning. You're used to this morning being Family and Friends Day. This is our morning that we usually have family and friends come to sunset. We uh, share this time of fellowship and worship with them, Bible class, and then we have a big meal together. Well, because things have changed a little bit, we're not able to do that this year. So we're going to be turning that around this year. We're going to go eat, knock on their door, and say, we're hungry. That's the plan, right, Matt? Not really? Okay, no. Matt has these bags up here, and they are uh, Connect 2 bags, and what we're doing is we're going to them this year. We're going to share who we are as a congregation and our love for Christ with them. We're going to them, and Matt's going to give us some more details later about what's in here and how to do that. But Matt, who is in charge of our outreach this year, it has been working on this with others, and he's going to bring a message to us and inspire us and encourage us in this challenge of reaching out and connecting to family and friends and sharing our Savior with them. So pay close attention to things he'll be saying a little bit later, and I know this morning will be a great blessing for you. Jeff is leading singing. We'll have him come up and ask you to stand as we sing about, think about, and praise God because he is mighty to save and his grace reaches all of us. Amen. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never fading.
grave, his grace reaches us, reaches me. Make it personal to you. And as soon as we sing this song, our brother David Hankins will get up and give us a devotional thought as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Deeper than the ocean and wider than the sea is the grace of the Savior for sinners. When I was a boy, my mom was a teacher. Um, she was a really good teacher. I even wanted to be in her class whenever I got to that grade. But after a few years of hearing her teach different classes, I, I heard the teacher voice. Some of you that teach or have had teachers in the past, you know what the teacher voice is. It's a little bit different. It's, um, it, it's got this sternness to it, but it's nice, and it's uplifting. It, it's ready to go. My mom had that voice, and as I'm hearing her give different lessons throughout that time period, I finally went up to her at one point, and I said, Mom, why don't you talk to us that way? And I wasn't being so much harsh against her or anything like that, but I liked that tone. And she said, well, do you want me to talk to you that way? Except she switched, and she used the teacher voice on me. And it was so weird. I couldn't stand it. I hadn't thought about what it would actually be like to have my mom talking to me in the teacher voice. And so my response was a definite no. Don't do that to me again, please. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 25. Luke chapter 14, verse 25.
The text reads, Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid the foundation and is, and is not able to finish and does not first sit and count the cost, excuse me. Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. We so often go through life without counting the cost. Just like me talking to my mom, I hadn't count, counted the cost. I hadn't thought about the change it would make, the difference in me, the difference in her. Jesus tells us if we're going to follow him, we need to sit down and count the cost. We're building up this body. We're building up this temple for him. And if we don't count the cost, we can fail. We're going to go out and we're going to be fighting different battles in life. And if we don't count the cost, we can fail. We have to daily come, count the cost, and then pick up the cross and follow Jesus. This is our time. This is the chance that we have. We can sit here now and decide what we're going to do today and the rest of our lives so that we can follow Jesus with that cross upon our shoulders, so that we can follow him and do his will and remember him and what he did for us. We need to count the cost. Let's pray for the bread. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, for his body, how he willingly died for us. And we ask you to save us. We ask you to forgive us. But do we count the cost? Do we understand what it took for that to happen? Thank you so much for Jesus, for his love, for his willingness, for him longing to do your will. I pray that we can do the same. Help us to count the cost today. In Jesus' name.
Let's pray for the cup. Lord, we thank you so much for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you that we can be washed, that we can be forgiven. Help us to remember at this time the suffering that Jesus endured. And know that when we're obedient to you, when we when we followed you and your words, that we can be forgiven. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your son. In Jesus' name. God forgive my sin in Jesus' name. I Before we pray, I'd like to read a couple of scriptures out of Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment 
to your bones. And let us be reminded what it says in Matthew chapter 6, where we're instructed to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all other things will be given to us as well. And do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. For each day has enough trouble of its own. There's a lot going on in the world today. We ask you to be praying for this church, for the leadership, and for those that you know that have been affected by the events, and to lift them up in prayer. Let's pray together now. Father, we come before you today to worship and praise you, and we're so grateful for the time we have together in this fellowship. We acknowledge that you are sovereign over all creation, and nothing is hidden from you, and nothing can stop your plan and purpose that you have for your people. You have brought salvation to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, please consider your people in our time of need, and we pray for your protection and your healing from this disease that has caused great suffering and death. We ask for comfort for those who mourn and give strength to those who continue in its grasp. And we know that many of our brothers and sisters here have lost loved ones and are, been, have suffered through this illness. Father, you appointed the nations of the earth and you allow them to govern. Help us to remember that we are citizens of heaven first and that we should put all our trust and faith and hope in you alone. Give peace of mind to those who are anxious over these coming elections this next week and help us to show the light and love of Christ in everything we do and how we live our lives and how we adjust and respond to the challenges of today. Father, grant us your wisdom that we may make good decisions about how we should move forward as a congregation. Help us to seek our knowledge from you. Help us as we move forward in this uncertain time. And Father, help our members to be understanding if changes need to take place. Father, we give you all the glory. We thank you for the Son who died on the cross for our sins. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved
to sing this next song, if you can. Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on. Soldiers of Christ, arise.
Thanks, brother. Good morning. Man, it is a great day to be here. Today is a special day. And you know, it isn't just a special day because I got an extra hour of sleep. Now, it's always a special day. Any day I get to sleep in, and I know most of you, or at least a lot of you, probably feel the same way. But it is a special day because it is Friends and Family Day at sunset. Now, it's not a normal Friends and Family Day. It looks a little bit different this year, just like everything else seems to look in the year 2020. But it's still a special day in which we want to take an opportunity to be intentional about connecting others to the kindness of Christ. Here at Sunset, our aim is to connect others to the kindness of Christ's salvation, the kindness of his saving grace, the kindness of his saving power. And from there, we aim to be connected to the strength of our Christian community and to the purpose, finding our purpose in the church in utilizing our giftedness for God and for one another. So for our 2020 Family and Friends Day, we're going to turn it around. And instead of inviting others in, we're going to focus on taking the kindness of Christ out to them. Connecting others to the kindness of Christ is something that takes intentionality. I have often wished that I was better about seeking out and taking advantage of those opportunities to share Jesus with someone else. But to be honest with you, I tend to find it a little intimidating. And at times I even find it to be scary. Any of you feel the same way? Well, there was a church in the New Testament that had mastered the ability at connecting their community to Christ so well that it was one of Paul's signature descriptors of them when he wrote them a letter. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, open to the book of 1 Thessalonians. We're going to be examining the Thessalonian church for just a few minutes. Now, this was one of those churches that the letter was primarily positive. What Paul had to say to them, he, he generally praised them. Now, obviously, they had some issues to work on, but he praised their work of faith. He praised their love for one another. And then let's begin reading in verse 6 here and see what else he had to say. <clears throat> he said, beginning in uh, chapter 1, verse 6, You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. Listen to verse 8. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. You see, the Thessalonians were so good at this, that Paul and, his, and the rest of the apostles and their co-workers didn't have to say anything. They had been that successful at connecting their community to Christ. So this morning, we're going to take a few moments and look a little closer at the Thessalonians and let them speak to us about connecting others to the kindness of Christ so that we can engage our own efforts with a little bit more confidence. Thessalonica, actually, as you look at it, had a lot in common with Lubbock. It was a lively, growing, industrious city that was well connected to the region by a fairly major highway. Their population was diverse, both ethnically and socioeconomically. So they were a very diverse group. The church itself was a strong, close-knit, united group of people who loved the Lord. But the similarities don't end there. I think that Thessalonica could also sympathize with us in a number of ways. We're living in a year where outreach especially is a challenge. And in some ways, it's virtually impossible 
And as we take a look at the Thessalonians, we see that they were certainly no strangers to that same issue. Paul mentions how they received the word in the midst of affliction. Imagine how they must have felt as they attempted to reach others. I'm sure they could sympathize with our difficulties, with our fears, with our attempts to navigate uncertain times while attempting to reach others. But here's the thing. They were still successful at it. So with all of this commonality in mind, it makes me ask the question, what can the Thessalonians say to us today? What advice would they give us about connecting others to Jesus as we navigate our own difficulties? Based on what Paul says, I think the, the first thing they would tell us is that it starts by the way we live. The Thessalonian Christians were called imitators. Quite literally what this means is that they mimicked. And Paul is saying they mimicked their mentors, their teachers, and even Christ himself. They looked beyond themselves, and they didn't appeal to an earthly standard to determine how to connect with people. They looked back at the very people who had connected them to Christ, and they did what they did. They even chose to mimic a certain movement that was new to them. The church was a new thing. But it was under a lot of duress. And so they had to make a choice to mimic this movement even in the times of tribulation. But most importantly, what we see in this text is that they mimicked Christ. They strove to be like Christ in the way they lived. They had no doubt heard teachings like Paul told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 11 when he said, be imitators of me as I also am of Christ. Well, because of their lifestyle, Paul said the church became an example to be followed. Their faith in God was noticeable, not only to Paul, but to others. Others around the region could see their Christ-like lifestyle, and they took notice. So here's what the Thessalonians are telling us. The Christian lifestyle is the first thing that people notice in us. It has a certain appeal to people, especially to those who are seeking. Did you ever stop and think about how refreshing Christian principles really are? A lot of times we get bogged down in our difficulties, and we don't necessarily stop to think about how refreshing the lifestyle that we choose to live based on the Word of God is. Just consider a few principles that govern and guide our lives. A love that is not jealous and keeps no record of wrongs, like Paul taught in 1 Corinthians 13. How about kindness, tenderheartedness, forgiveness toward each other, as he taught in Ephesians chapter 4. Or how about something as simple as just giving and not expecting anything in return? There is an attractive appeal to a life that is led by love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness instead of a life led by things like strife, jealousy, anger, factions, and envy. Much more appeal to a Christian lifestyle. I think the Thessalonians would also tell us with this about the importance of our lifestyle being in concert with what we say. What we do and how we live will speak louder than any words that we ever say to people. This is why Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, let your light shine before men in order that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In order to maximize the potential of our words, our lives should demonstrate the practice of what we're saying. The Thessalonian Christians were aware of this, and it was noticeable in the way that they mimicked their mentors, and it was noticeable in the way that they mimicked their Savior. 
Even through the difficulty of the last few months, our lifestyle has still been speaking the kindness of Christ. When you have sent cards or made phone calls or helped someone get groceries, your lifestyle was and still is connecting others to the kindness of Christ. I've been on the receiving end of some of those phone calls. I've had members call me during this pandemic, people I never would have expected to call just to see how I was doing. When you did that, you not only made my day, but you shared the kindness of Christ. And we're still doing that. The Thessalonian Christians didn't rely solely on their example, though. They also made a concerted effort to share the message of Christ. So I think the next thing that they might tell us is that we connect others to the kindness of Christ by the message we share. The text says the gospel resonated from the Thessalonians to the whole region. And it was good news in the midst of a world that was full of not good news. You think we can relate to that in any way? I wonder, you know, making this comparison of the similarities between us and the Thessalonians, I wonder what their nightly news might have looked like. Or maybe the Thessalonian newspaper. What might they have said about the church in Thessalonica, or in Thessalonica, excuse me? Something like obscure Thessalonian cult spreads like wildfire throughout Macedonia this year. And of course, since it's in the news, women and children have to be affected the most, right? Isn't that what all scary news is that's designed to scare us? Perhaps they had their own fact check system like we do. We have fact checkers now on Facebook. If you share a news story on Facebook, it will be fact-checked. Perhaps they had something like that. Here's the point of this. Here's what I'm, the point I'm trying to make. Their environment was similar to ours in that they received the good news in a bad news world. They spread the good news in a bad news world. The world was not a friendly place to receive it, and the world was not a friendly place to share it. So the question is, why did it work? How did it work? The gospel worked then, and it still works today, because it is the good news of the kindness of Christ. The gospel is the only thing with the power to heal brokenness. The gospel is the only thing that truly has the power to equalize. Paul said in Galatians 3, beginning in verse 26, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Only the gospel has the power to do that. It is the only thing in this world with the true power of equality. The gospel is also the only thing in the world that has the power to save a soul. It is the only thing with the power to save lost souls. Paul said in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is also the only thing with the power to give people a new life. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. This is the message that resonated from the Thessalonians, and the whole region knew it. They epitomized the concept that Peter talked about in 1 Peter 2, 9. They knew they were a chosen race. They knew they were a royal priesthood, a holy nation. They knew they were God's people so that they could tell out the message of him who called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Thessalonians are telling us, you have the only message with any real hope for the world. So let people know about it. So the Thessalonians have told us it's in your life 
and it's in your message. But they also tell us it's about the places we take it. The kindness of Christ is spread in all the places that we take our faith. Paul mentions that in verse 8. The Thessalonians didn't necessarily, didn't necessarily rely on people coming to them, but they took their faith out even under duress. When something gets out, it tends to spread. And the reach of it is immediately beyond our ability to comprehend it. Kind of like an airborne virus. I imagine the Thessalonians probably started next door, and then I'm guessing they continued from there. Uh, knowing the highway system of that day, I can only imagine that they probably took it down the road to the next community and the next community until all of Macedonia and Achaia were aware of it. But I am certain that they had no idea how far reaching their faith really was. Our faith can go places we never dreamed possible just by starting next door. Today, we have an opportunity to take our faith out and connect others in our community to the kindness of Christ. A whole bunch of volunteers, a whole bunch of helpers has assembled all of these gift bags that you see here. And they've assembled them for you to take to someone else. These gift bags are an opportunity for you to connect with someone and just simply show that you care about them. They provide you with something to just simply start a conversation with a neighbor while connecting them to the saving message of the gospel of Christ. And you can see on the screen there the contents of what is in here. And there's, there's some little gifts. We've got hand sanitizer. We've got some little breath mints. They've got scriptures on the box and stuff. Breath mints in the, in the days of wearing masks all the time have become more important. At least I've noticed that. And so we figured that would be a great gift to give others. And then there's information in here about all the great ministries that Sunset offers. I shouldn't say all because we probably missed some, but it shares some of, the, some of the great ministries Sunset has to offer. But the signature item in there is this, and that is this World Bible School Bible. Now, some of you I know are familiar with this. Some of you probably aren't. It is an English Standard Version Bible but in the back of it is all of the World Bible School study material laid out in a very organized way, and it's great. It's, it's arranged topically. There's, there's one topic in here that is simply, this is good news, and it shares the good news of Jesus. There's another section in here that is just about living a life of love. And they've done a fantastic job with this. And so this is the signature item to get in other people's hands. But there's also this little connect to God card. And on the back of this, this has a website. And this website directs people to Bible study. And it's not threatening, it's anonymous. So if they want to study the Bible and learn about the kindness of Jesus' salvation, this will get them there. And the cool thing about it is it connects to teachers that would grade this stuff online anonymously to them, connects them to teachers who are right here in Lubbock. Most of them part of our number. So this is really neat. And, and this bag just gives you that type of an opportunity. It is all good news opportunities. It provides all of us with an opportunity to take our faith out to others that we may never have attempted to connect with otherwise. Honestly, I would not normally be motivated to strike up this kind of a conversation with my neighbor out of thin air. But I can take one of these bags next door and have a natural conversation starter. And in the process, I can share with them the great things that we offer right here. From there, God can do things that are beyond anything that we could ask or imagine with it. 
The challenge of 2020 has presented us with some unique opportunities. Today, it has provided us with an opportunity to turn Family and Friends Day around and take the kindness of Christ to our neighborhoods in the city of Lubbock. The Thessalonian Christians are speaking to us today, and they can inspire us to connect others to the kindness of Christ by our lifestyle and by our message. And this little gift bag provides us with an opportunity to take our faith to new people and places. So here's the challenge. The Thessalonians are telling us to go forth with the kindness of Christ. Don't underestimate the power of what your gift and your kindness can do to change someone's life. We offer an invitation each week, and we're going to do that here in a couple minutes. But first, what I'd like you to do is come up. You see these bags are distance out. I'd like you to come up and take a bag and take our invitation out to the community. Take it out of this building to the community. Jeff's going to come up here, or Jeff's going to lead a song for us. And while Jeff is singing, I'd invite everybody to just come on up and take a bag. We've got plenty. For those of you who are streaming with us and watching online, we are going to figure out a way to make sure that you can get one of these bags. We'll have plenty of extra and we'll make sure that you have an opportunity also. All right, Jeff. I love to tell the story of amazing things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because how much God can do with what we have done. But you know, our late faculty member Abe Lincoln said, if we think we can accomplish the Lord's work without prayer, we've deceived ourselves into thinking that we can accomplish the Lord's work without the Lord. So let's pray about this. Holy Father, we are a blessed people. We are blessed that you're our God, and we are blessed to be your people. We are blessed with the only hope that there really is in all of this universe, Father. And Father, we are blessed to have our citizenship in heaven because, Father, we feel the stress of an uncertain world. It is real to us. And we want to help it by sharing the kindness of Christ with the world. Father, I ask this morning that you give us the courage, that you give us the boldness to do just that. Father, we ask you to bless this effort, and we pray that it bears much fruit for you. 
we know that you are able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine. So Father, today we ask you to use us in this effort to do just that. Father, to you be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Perhaps you've not yet connected yourself with the kindness of Christ. And boy, we do not want you to leave here this morning without doing that. And that's why we make this time available. So if we can help you in any way be connected to our Savior, let us know now as we stand and as we sing. If the name of the Savior is precious to you, if his care has been constant and tender and true, if the light of his presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell of your gladness today? simple little tool, this little gift. We pray that you will be able to do that. If you didn't have a chance to grab one, be sure and get one uh, as you go out. You're welcome to come up here as you're dismissed and use these things. And if we run out, we'll be making more and we'll get those to you at home as well as Matt said. So thank you for being here today. It's been a great day. Amen. There's lots of family and friends out there that need us to be like this Thessalonian church and to, uh, to be able to share our faith. So thank you for being here today. You are dismissed. Be seated, and we'll let the uh, ushers come and and just guide you out. And uh, thank you for coming.